actually the present day uh, sinking area was the sea for hundred years ago meaning that this land actually uh, new land that uh, developed from sedimentation and on that land people built uh, housing and, and cities industries agriculture uh, fish pond then the extraction of groundwater is excessive enough to cause the uh, subsidence In the past flooding was very predictable it happens especially during the full moon because this is uh, it works with the gravitation of the earth something like that but now it is uh, unpredictable anytime <laughs> water can come in kuningan we have uh, so many people most of them are retired uh, from civil civil serpent meaning that they do not have a uh, enough money even to elevate their lords uh, let's say five or ten years once in five or ten years and uh, yeah they just accept whatever happened there and when they said that flood waters when they were little it, it reaches only their ankle and then right now it reaches the hip level so it's rising rapidly over the years so that means more resources is needed to to elevate your houses. Uh, they often feel that uh, they are neglected when they are seeking for services. For instance, if you are uh, shopping in the city center, then you want to go home, you ask taxi, let's go to uh, Kuningan. There is a poor probability of rejected because of the rain is coming or the sky is dark, it's about rain, then they have a reason to reject. No, we, we don't go to Kuningan. On Google Earth, you can find satellite images of Timbal Sloko 1985 onwards. The older images show settlements on either side of a road breaking away from the highway and snaking into the Java Sea. Behind the settlements, large stretches of agricultural fields. As you go down the years to present day, the satellite images change drastically. Around 2010, the Java Sea starts to enter the rice fields. As of 2024, all you see is the road and the settlements along it, but they seem to be jutting into the water like a 5 km boardwalk. All the agricultural land behind the settlements is gone. On the ground, Timbal's local residents told Diamonds in the Delta researchers that until around 2010, it was a relatively prosperous area. Farmers grew rice, coconut, cassava and bananas. And then in 2017, the tidal floods started and land started subsiding. They believed that the reason was extension of the Tanjung Ima sport deeper into the sea which disrupted the wave patterns and diverted them towards Timbul's loco. Flooding is already an issue being felt by Delta communities in Manila Bay areas, but because of this large-scale reclamation project, particularly the New Manila International Airport that really contributed to more drastic flooding impacts. We have a very recent issue of enforced disappearance of activists in reclamation areas. Military or armed people would go to the communities in 2020 to start uh, driving people away so that they could relocate elsewhere. This is not something new. It's common for big infrastructure projects who are 
who are met with people's opposition. I think this is happening quite often actually, that with a focus on, on technocratic planning, on, on the infrastructure component, on master plan making, in, th th there is created a blindness for uh, grassroots at the, uh, at the community level. What might be the problem with the Dutch Delta approach? Because there are a lot of good intentions and good faith on one hand, and on the other hand, uh, it has this effect, uh, the, the, the expropriation, the marginalization of people, of communities losing their livelihoods. 